everyone i hope you're having an amazing day um so today i will be uh talking about apex test or how to write a uh, test class for an apex code um so until now we have looked at different options in platform dev like creating a visual force page we talked about lightning component uh we even talked about uh, writing an apex code right so that's great so now what we're going to do we're going to talk about writing a test class right because test class is very important uh, if you don't know how to write a test class, then I will teach you how to do that today. It's very basic. Uh, I mean, it's not too hard, right? Uh, so I'm going to start with the basic, then we're going to do more advanced stuff uh, probably in our next uh, session as well. Okay, so why test class is important, right? Because Salesforce uh, have the system in place, right? Where if you wanted to deploy your uh, code to production, you need to write a test class. And you need to uh, have a test class which runs, the, you know, the test uh, scenario in your actual class or in a method, and to make sure that uh, it works fine. Uh, because obviously you don't want a bad, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, bad code in your production environment, right? Because given the fact that uh, Salesforce is, a, a ba is based on multi-tenant architecture, the last thing they want is that you put some crappy code in the production and it's causing other issues, right? Um, okay, so uh, so the writing test uh, class in Apex is pretty straightforward. Uh, and you need to uh, keep one thing in mind, that when you wanted to deploy your code to production, right, your test code coverage should be over 75 percent right if your code coverage for whatever reason uh, shows uh, below 75 then salesforce won't let you deploy your code from sandbox or partial sandbox or wherever it is sandbox to let's say sandbox to production right it will not work uh, you can use different tools to uh, deploy your code you can use chain set or you can use gear set uh, so we won't be talking about that today so today what i'm going to do i'm going to create a dummy uh, class uh, the class so, so let, let's talk about a scenario right so what we're gonna do we're gonna create a um, an apex class which create an account and create a contact and link that account ID to contact right pretty straightforward and we're gonna create a, a test class based on that pretty straightforward right okay let's jump in the first thing first you need to uh, have your uh, org ready so that it wh what I meant by that you need to log into your uh, org which org you want uh, but please make sure do not try this on a customer sandbox please test this uh, on a developer account which is a free uh, account so you can um, you know you can log into uh, that okay all right so let me take you to developer console the way to go to developer console as usual uh, is go to the gecko icon and go to developer console we take you there i've already uh logged into my developer console so i have a dummy class here which is called accounts class right so what we're gonna do <clears throat> excuse me we're gonna write uh, a method which creates an account and then account ID will be uh, linked to the contact which we're going to create now, right? Pretty straightforward, right? Nothing fancy here. Until now, I'm pretty sure you're very fairly confident we're writing Apex, right? If not, I would encourage you to please go and check out my previous video about creating an Apex. It's very important you need to know how to create an Apex before you attempt platform day one. I can't emphasize enough, right? If you're someone who do not understand Apex, please do not attempt platform dev one it's not you're not ready yet right i i'm not saying to discourage you but i'm just telling you if you don't know how to write an apex code at this stage please you do not attempt platform dev right you might clear by guessing answer but right i mean i mean would you really like to work in an organization where they find out you can't even write an apex code and you are a platform dev certified no, that really will be nice, right? Okay, all right. So let's uh, let's dive in. So so we're gonna write a uh, class. Uh, so we're gonna do uh, public static uh, void. Uh, we're just gonna do create account uh, and um, and contact. Uh, sorry, this seems like a very bad example, but. Uh, you know the reason why i'm trying and very simple as well at the same time i wanted to give you an idea how to write a test class because today's uh session uh is not about apex development it's about writing a test okay all right uh, so let me uh uh do this faster uh, i won't be explaining uh much today in, in this part of a code because i assume you already know what i'm doing okay so as i said the requirement is to create an account and then link the account ID to the customer. Uh, sorry, contact. So we're gonna do we're gonna do account A equals to. Uh, sorry. Uh, come on. Right, 
view account. Right, okay. Uh, it's going to do a dot name equals to. I'm going to do demo ACC, ACC test. Right. Right, okay, that will do the job for now. Uh, insert A. And then we're going to do contact, contact C equals to new contact. Right. Okay, and we're going to do C dot last name. Okay, um, uh, last name. Okay, we're going to do, uh, we're going to do what's, whatever name, demo last name, right? Okay, uh, C uh, dot account ID equals to A dot ID. Okay, um, then we're going to do insert C, right? Pretty straightforward, uh, nothing fancy here. So what I'm doing is I'm creating an account and then I'm creating a contact. I'm linking that account, uh, contact uh, account ID to the newly created account ID, right? Pretty straightforward. Okay, now let's jump in and create a test class. So to do that, you need to go to file and go to new and do Apex. Uh, okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna do demo uh, ACC cont test, right? Okay, sounds good. Right, so it looks like a very simple, uh, basic Apex code, right? Yeah, it is an Apex code, but the difference uh, between this class and this class is based on the annotation we're going to use, right? So you're going to use AES test, right? Save it. So what we're going to happen now, this has become a test class, right? You see the run test is activated here. Now, if you go here, there's no run test here, right? That's pretty, that's the easiest way you can check. Okay, so let's write one uh, test method here. So what we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna do, um, uh, so private static void uh, test count and uh, contact, right? Uh, so, okay, so now the magic happens, right? So you can do something like test dot start test, right? And so test dot uh, and stop test. All right, so you need to write to your code in between this. So this is uh, the code you need to keep in mind that it says start test, stop test, right? So this actually tells you that my test is started and stop test will actually tell you the test is stopped, right? Okay, so this is the skeleton code, but this is not, this is still not right. Okay, the reason why it's not right, the first thing you need to annotate your method with um, is test, right? And then, let's save it and see what happens. Okay, there's a problem there. I understand that there's a problem. It does not have correct signature from the type test, which is fine. Right, now what happens is, you know the, it, it's okay you can do test or start test, right? But let's say, uh, imagine a scenario, right, where someone has created a, a test class for whatever reason. Now, if you do test or start test, what happens is trying to look for the test method, start test method in a test class, which is which might have been created by someone, right? So it won't work because there is no test method. So just to make sure so that your code uh, won't fall, fall apart in the future for whatever reason, just uh, use system dot test, test dot, right, start test. And you're gonna put system dot, system dot, okay. All right, let's save it and see what happens. Cool, it's saved, right? So this is the best way you can do it, right? Uh, also, uh, they used to have, uh, you know, uh, it was another method, uh, you know, instead of I test, which was uh, deprecated, so, you might see code uh, which do not contain um, ease test method. Instead, they have something like static method or something. Uh, so the, this is a bit, this is the latest way. This is this is how our Salesforce encourages you to do it because you need to use i i test ease test right. So uh, right okay. Now what we're gonna do? We're gonna uh, put this uh, method here inside of a class, right? Okay, count dot create account content. Hopefully this works, right? Let's save it. So 
All right, so that doesn't exist. Okay, play with public static void. Shoot. Okay. Uh, just wait for a second. Right, so, so far, uh, everything looks good. So no problem at all whatsoever. Now, this is not complete yet, right? Because what we have done, we have done, uh, okay, test dot start test, uh, test dot stop, and in between we have called this, uh, uh, the method from this class, right? But are we, how are we checking if the test is successful or not, right? So what we wanted to find out, so in this scenario, we know that if the text, if the test works successfully, you will have one contact, right? And one account. So the way you can test is by getting a contact count and comparing with one. Okay, I'll show you what I mean by. Okay, I'm gonna do uh, integer say um, contact count equals to select count from contact. Yeah, let's see if it works. Fantastic. Now we have something called system dot assert. Right? It's a boolean condition, so so we are getting a flag value contact count so contact count right now we wanted to test if it's equals to one the reason why it's equals to one right because we are not uh because we are relying on um the the, the data which has been creating here so this code assumes that if there will be one contact there will be one account right so that's why i'm testing it with this because I'm not asking uh, uh, this code to look into the underlying data, right? Because this code only tests uh, whatever you're doing right now, right? So I'll show you what I meant by that. Uh, let me run this first, right? I will explain to you. Uh, it sometimes takes time depending upon uh, how many classes you have, but since it's a, um, a demo org and so it shouldn't take much time, as you can see. Uh, it took only one second, uh, sorry, two seconds perhaps. Uh, but in real life scenario, it might your test class might take a minute if you have a lot of text, test cases that needs to be executed, right? Okay, so let's go to this uh, test here, right? And you see this test has been run now, successful. Okay, demo account test, right? If you click here, so it shows everything correct. Now, if you remember, I mentioned that your code should cover at least 75% and above. So how do you know, right, whether my code is uh, over 75%, right? You don't know, right? So look here on the right-hand side. It shows account class 90%, right? So my code coverage is 90%, which is good enough, right? You don't have to have 100%. It will be great if you can do 100%. But if, you're, if you think, if your functional consultant has an amazing job in testing stuff and you know everything works, and your code coverage contains uh, is 90%, that's fine. I mean, it will let you uh, deploy your code, right? Salesforce will let you deploy your code to your production, right? Uh, as long as you know your logic works to the point uh, that and nothing will fall apart. Uh, it's good to write test case. It's very good to write test case. I'm a big fan, uh, fan of writing test case. At times, the deployment can be very painful. I've been through that stage. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute, why it's painful at times. So. Uh, so, okay, so now we need to find out whether your code, whether your class is actually covering over 95%. And and you can also find out the the, the part of a code which got skipped or, you know. All right, so go to this class here, right? And you have something called code coverage here, if you see. Uh, just go here and all tests. Ta-da! It shows, uh, everything in blue shows these are the, the part which has been executed. And only thing that's not executed is the uh, the catch statement, which is fine because there's an exception here. So, so this is the way you can figure out whether your Apex is um, actually sorry, you, whether your test class is executing uh, the part of a code. Ninety percent is pretty good, no problem with that, right? It will let you deploy it. Okay, now uh, there is something called uh, uh, oh no, not this one. Okay, let's see if that works. 
Just a second, I'll tell you what I'm trying to do, right? Okay. Right. What just that happen, right? You said, hang on a second, what did happen? Why my test failed? Right? Okay. Hang on a second, I'll explain to you why. Just bear with me for a second, guys. Just a second. This is very important. You need to understand this very well. And I will say much of your uh, 25, okay? So we're going to do 25, okay? All right, let's save it. Because you will come up a scenario in your uh, development, right, where you find, oh, uh, it's not clearing my uh, test uh, deployments or whatever reason. So the reason I tell you, okay. Fine. Uh, no problem. Okay. All right, that's great. Now, true. Okay, let's see if that works. Fantastic. Right, so you might be wondering what this guy is doing, right? Okay, so there is something called see all data, right? By default, it's, it's false. So if I do this, right? So it means that see all data is false. What that means is that when you run a test class, right? When you run your test case, Salesforce, uh, your Apex code or your test data relies on the data which you create in the test class. What I mean by that, like, let's say you have your underlying database, right? Where the data gets stored, right? You know, the account, the contact, everything. So when you set to this option, see all data equals to true, you are actually telling your test class that, look, I'm exposing my production data to you so that you can do all the tests you want and, you know, and, and we'll do whatever you want. But the thing I wanted to tell you is that the, it won't uh, do any kind of DML operation. It won't uh, affect your underlying, uh, the test class won't fiddle with your underlying data. This is just a way to, you know, do some kind of uh, calculation in the fly, <clears throat> excuse me, and then... Um, it will see whether you have a, a exact code coverage. So now you might wonder why do you want it, us to fiddle right with the production data? The, uh, there's there might be a scenario in your uh, uh, you know in development where you might think that creating a production uh, sorry test data is way too complicated. Let's say you have fifteen to twenty objects to deal with, right? And some of them are very tightly coupled to the validation rules and kind of stuff. Um, so you might think, oh, look, well, my uh, production has already has a data inside, right? So what if I do set all data equals to true? In any way, we're going to test, you know, against existing data, but it won't affect, uh, it won't have any impact on existing data, right? It's just merely a validation check. In that scenario, yeah, you can probably go for that because we have done that in, in our scenario when we were doing deployment. Uh, it was a nightmare creating a test data. I can tell you it was a, extremely painful. I spent two days is by writing a data, test data, and still my test classes was failing because one or another uh, object is not getting, getting created because it has like 50 validation rules in place. You know, um, excuse me, if you're hearing a noise, my apologies for that. Uh, some my neighbors are doing some, I don't know what he's doing. So, uh, so yeah, so yeah, that's one of the reasons why um, you don't see um, see all data equals to true or false in most of the test cases because if your test cases are, are simple enough, if you're not dealing with very too many objects, then, you know, I would say, yeah, don't use C all data equals to true. If not, if you think that your test data is way too complicated to write for whatever reason, yeah, please go for this option. Doesn't, uh, but you need to test the pros and cons, right? You're the one, you're the developer out there, you know what is best for your, uh, you know, environment. And uh, yeah, and read about uh, see all data equals true from uh, Trailhead or from uh, our documentation, right? I'll put the link below if you, for your reference so that, you know, for Trailhead so that you can go through it. 
Um, so yeah, this is all I wanted to cover. So the writing a test class is very important, right? If you, uh, Salesforce won't let you deploy your code to production. If you think that, oh, I can get away with it, you can't get away with it. You need to write your test class, right? And you need to write an efficient way, right? You need to do um, test all the scenarios. Uh, there might be time where you say, oh, look, code coverage 10% then you know that which part of the code is not getting executed for whatever reason, right? Okay, I'll show you what I mean by that since we are here. <clears throat> Hang on a second. Uh, let's see. I'll create one dummy uh, method here, right? Just for your own uh, explanation. So what we're going to do, uh, let's get one single contact from here. Uh, public uh, static uh, contact get contact. So that it becomes more easier for you what I'm talking about. Contact, contact C equals to select I from contact uh, limit one. Any contact, doesn't matter. I just wanted to demonstrate. Uh, I know that you might say, oh, this code is crap. Yeah, this is crap. Just wanted to give you uh, an idea what happens when you don't cover your entire class. Right, in your test case scenario, how will the test case looks like so that you, you get the idea of what I'm talking about. Okay, so what happens now? We got to, uh, you have added, uh, you, it might be a scenario where a, another developer comes and adds an extra new method, right? Let's say another developer decides to add this method, but he forgot to append, he or she forgot to append uh, the test class, right? So I'm gonna make it false here, right? I don't want to rely on production data for now, okay. So, and then you decide to run your test class, right? Um, and let's see what happens. What do you think will, ha will happen? Will the code coverage be 90%, 90%? No, it's not, you see, it's 69%. And now you see, right? So that means this part of the code is not getting executed. Can you deploy this code to production? Absolutely not, because it's less than 75%. So what do you need to do? You need to write another test case, right? Which cater for this class as well, right? It's that simple. There's nothing, so that's all you have to do. So you need to uh, keep this into consideration before you do this, because it's very important, right? This is one of the most important part of software development in Salesforce. I can't emphasize enough, right? Because I've been through that path and it was painful at the end of the day when you wanted to deploy your stuff and you realize it's not getting deployed, it's complaining code coverage, it's getting other issues. And when your boss was like, hey, what's going on? Deployment should take only half a day or a day. Oh, well, well, it's not working because the test class is not covering for whatever reason, right? That might happen if you have a very super complex objects to deal with. In our case, it was the case. Right, so but we managed to deploy it. So, you know, a lot of things you can learn. Uh, this this all comes from experience, real life experience. So I got a lot of experience deploying this stuff. So I'm sharing with you guys. So please, please, please pay attention to your test classes. It's very, very important. Right? Please do not think, oh, I wanted to keep it to the last moment. No, 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 no. Please don't. It's as important as writing your actual code. It's very important. Right. Okay. So that's all I wanted to cover, guys. I hope you guys find uh, some value in today's session. Uh, if you want, if you wanted to ask any questions, uh, please ask me on the comments below. I will try to respond uh, whenever I get time. Right. So that's all I wanted to cover today. So I hope you have an amazing day wherever you are, whichever part of the world you are. Uh, so greetings from New Zealand. Adios.